The European Union is committed to Sustainable Development Goal 12.3. That means that the EU aims to reduce 50% of per capita food waste at retail and consumer level by 2030. The EU research project, Refresh, aimed at building evidence on how Europe can meet the target. So Refresh has been running since 2015 up to, up to 2019 with 26 partners across Europe and China. So we found a collaboration with the, the, the key partners in Europe focusing on reducing food waste and building a sustainable system from the scientific area, from more the uh, applied uh, research, but also other stakeholders that are needed to make the change to reduce food waste. What is, what is really important that in Refresh, this was the first time that we tackled this, uh, this issue on a systemic level. So not focusing on food waste by itself, but looking how can we transform the whole system towards a better, more responsible food system. I've decided on three main topics. Uh, the consumer behaviour, the uh, voluntary agreement approach for business engagement and of course the, how do you add value to uh, unavoidable food waste. These are the main topics but we definitely have this integrated approach to really see how that fits together. So we had this big survey for different countries all over Europe and people answered these questions about how much they're wasting but also about their household practices, so what they're doing uh, about food in their household. The survey showed that consumers with busy lifestyles, which encounter unforeseen changes in their schedule more often, tend to waste more food. Whereas households with less waste show four good practices. They buy less impulsively, they maintain a good overview of their food stock, they cook more precisely, and they use up leftovers for cooking new meals. If you ask people, why are you doing something? They don't say, oh, I do it because I see everybody else doing it. They have their own reasons and their own um, um, sort of justifications for why they're doing what they're doing. We're not going to acknowledge that we just follow the crowd. So people generally don't acknowledge how important uh, the social norm actually is. Well, it's crucial in a lot of things. So what I think is really um, important is that we change the way we address consumers, the way we talk to people and make sure that they understand that wasting is not normal and that it's normal to value food, to take care of the food. When we studied consumer behaviour in Refresh, um, we also wanted to draw a conclusion for policymakers. And what our research has shown is that People do not actually change their behavior if they're just aware of the topic or if they are feeling guilty. Um, and other research has also shown us that what policymakers often do, which is awareness raising campaigns, is actually the least successful instrument you can use. Um, what you should better do, though, is to work with social norms, so people react to what others do, what my friends and family do. Um, so you should better create social norm campaigns that show you the positive behavior of others. I think one of the surprises indeed had to do with what um, motivates consumers to prevent food waste and in fact what could cause them unexpectedly perhaps to waste even more food. So the findings from the Consumer Research Project, for instance, which showed that to go on and on about the, the many real and terrible impacts of food waste is not the best strategy if we want to motivate ourselves also as citizens and consumers to fight food waste in our daily lives. The work that Refresh did on uh, consumer behavior was very interesting and very uh, meaningful to us. We learned a lot about that and we actually we, we took that knowledge and implemented that in our new campaign. So that was like spot on. 
and very useful. Food waste numbers differ amongst the EU member states, and each country faces a unique situation. Hence, responses to the challenge of reducing food waste need to be adapted nationally. The European Research Project Refresh therefore created national networking platforms in five countries. The platforms included business partners from food production and retail, as well as policymakers, researchers, and civil society organisations. One of the surprising things really was just how willing uh, the, the major retailers and governments were in, in each of the, the countries where we tested Refresh to come together. You know, we were able to get them sitting around the table very quickly, uh, much more quickly than was anticipated when the project was put together. For me, as a representative of Penny in the Refresh project, it was very interesting to be part of the discussions. Um, we um, had very open discussions and um, I think it was very helpful that um, actors of the different supply chain sectors were involved, so um, we could really um, um, get to know the challenges that each sector faces to reduce food waste. And I think that was very helpful. And of course, I had the chance to represent um, yeah, retailers and our problems that we have to reduce food waste. The national platforms set up voluntary agreements and started different pilot activities against food waste. In Spain, Gastrofera, the catering service at the Barcelona Fair, studied its food waste. Reduction measures were implemented thereafter and the impact was monitored. Although it's difficult to ascertain the impact of single interventions, there were significant reductions in food waste at the trade fairs following this pilot activity. Furthermore, a process of food waste monitoring and prevention has been developed that can be replicated by other catering companies. For, for us, the, the, main, the main change, the main thing that we saw was the, how important it is to quantificate uh, the impact of the leftovers. So that's for me what's the, 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 the main thing. We already know that we have a food that, that it's not profit, that it's a leftover, but we never have the quantity. So we start to, to work and think about how much food we are throwing away or moving to a, another place. So for me, the main thing was to quantify how much food we waste. One of the great things that, that we've been able to do in Refresh is distill all the information and experience that we've learned from the, the piloting of the voluntary agreement approaches into a, a really simple tool, a blueprint for how to set up a voluntary agreement, which has five key stages. Well, the Refresh blueprint is really a process that policymakers can, can walk through, uh, make sure that if they're considering a voluntary agreement in a country, that all the correct actors are brought around the table, uh, the right governance structure, the right funding is put in place and the right actions are identified and that these, the, those actions are, are measured and, and the results are quantified. That gives you everything you, you need for a framework for a, a successful voluntary agreement. What's really pleasing is that a number of countries have come forward and said that they'll use that blueprint and our, our experience to set up voluntary agreements in their country. So Sweden, for example, have expressed an interest, uh, Croatia, Greece and Belgium. And in a couple of the refresh countries, the Netherlands and Germany, it, it very much looks like the, the platforms will be continued and, and turned into national agreements for, for retailers and business to work together. The European Union aims to reduce its food waste. But even if food waste is reduced as much as possible, there will always be food that cannot be prevented from being wasted. Refresh has studied many options of how to use food side flows in a more sustainable way than is done today. One example is how catering leftovers can be fed to pigs and chickens. So right now we have um, we do take some of our leftover food to make animal feed, for example, uh, bread and uh, biscuit and cereal leftovers and we can feed this to all kinds of livestock, but we exclude or we prohibit uh, any leftovers that might have meat in it. And that's why we need to create separate legislation for omnivores such as pigs and chickens. 
And if we did this, we could actually process up to 14 million tons of food waste every year into animal, into pig feed and chicken feed. Whereas right now we only process 5 million tons because everything else is prohibited with the legislation. And what we did with Refresh is we brought together experts, food and feed microbiologists, veterinary epidemiologists, um, veterinarians and pig health and nutrition experts. And we brought these experts together in two different expert panels and they confirmed that technically speaking you can make food surplus safe for pigs if you do it right. We've realized that in the European context, what we can do is process feed in specialist licensed treatment plants and only take feed that has gone through the specialist processing to make sure it's safe. When we started this work with Refresh, and this is what's been really exciting, the first conversations I had with stakeholders from the feed industry, from the pig industry and policymakers, they all said, no way, this is too dangerous, we don't want to know anything about this. But as we evolved the research and we spoke to experts and we demonstrated how it can be done, slowly more and more of the stakeholders from the pig industry, from the feed industry, from different uh, governments started engaging with us and actually looking for the solutions. And we've got a really good dialogue now where, where these different stakeholders think that, think that it can be done and it can be done safely, including veterinarians and other yeah, important stakeholders. Well, I think the most important legacy are the, all the many solutions that Refresh has provided to help all actors, including the European Commission and member state authorities, to put in place effective programs to fight food waste. Refresh has not shied away from the very difficult questions. Refresh has provided new insights on how to fight consumer food waste, where most food waste is generated in the EU. Refresh has also provided a blueprint method to help member states develop national food waste prevention programs all of this is needed to help us get more quickly towards having food waste by 2030. But last but not least, Refresh has created a very important community of stakeholders committed to fighting food waste, and that is the most important legacy that will live on and make sure that we indeed reach the target of having food waste by 2030. These insights were not only used to inform discussions at the European Union Food Loss and Waste Platform, for example, but will continue to guide European Union policies on food waste reduction in the future. Our 2030 target is a shared obligation and it refreshes a holistic framework for action approach, technological innovations, along with support for national implementation of food programs, means we can share this burden. A personal investment from each one of us is required to meet the global challenge of halving food waste by 2030, no doubt. But with legacy of refresh in hand, we are all better equipped to do so.